Hello ladies and gents, hope you're well, hope you had a fantastic day and today I wanted to introduce you to Paola. Now Paola is a nutritionist and a mindset therapist as well and we had a great conversation that I was actually really intrigued about how the flow really changed and I'd be love to hear what you think in the comment section down below but I'm now going to hand over to her to explain a little bit more about what she does and give a little bit of an intro onto her business and then we'll also get into some of the core principles and core things you should be thinking about when you're really going to be starting out in business and 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 you know creating the life that is creating the best version of yourself i support people to lose weight live a healthier lifestyle and get a better understanding about themselves so that they're able to live the life they would like to lead feeling comfortable in their own skin and what I do is I work one to one and I also just starting off some a, a group program where I it's actually quite different because I find there is a different way to look at health and well being than most of us been told and with that in mind I just created this group program which I'm bringing out. I started to do that uh, one to one already for a few years now three years. And I have very good results with people. So if it is people to uh, lose weight, people with diabetes too, and get off diabetes too. Um, but I also have people who, um, for example, students uh, who suffer with anxiety. So just before lockdown, I was working with a young student. She was suffering with anxiety because of lockdown. I have someone uh, who has family issues and doesn't know how to communicate. So I work with him as well. Um, what else have I got? Um, then uh, another person who had grieving issues, but she was grieving and I helped her through that. Um, so it's all kinds. My background is really, I am in working in the medical and psychological field already for the last 30 years. So I started off as a physiotherapist and then I worked, well, I worked with that in ICU and worked with athletes. I used to work in Zurich. I lived a long time. Well, you may be here, I'm, I'm German, but I lived longer in Switzerland than I actually lived in Germany. And um, so I was doing all kinds in physiotherapy. I also trained as a breathing therapist for asthma and cystic fibrosis. And then I wanted to open my own practice. And I felt um, to give always the best to my clients, I cannot only just see a joint, a part of their body, a joint, a muscle. I want to look more holistically. And that's when I trained in something called acupoint massage, seeing uh, going in from the Chinese medicine side of things, massaging the meridians uh, with a utensil, a, a lot uh, say, oh, it's like acupressure, but it actually has nothing to do with acupressure. It's really leaned on acupuncture, but taking into the Western world. And that's when I started to get curious about plants and herbs as well, and the nutrition side of things, because in the Chinese medicine, you look from all angles. And then I was running my own really successful practice in Switzerland. And then I came to Switzerland and I wanted to get people to look at their health and well being in a fun way. And that's when I started to run cooking courses, whole food plant based cooking courses, and also did my degree in the scientific approach of nutrition. And then I had one angle missing, and that was the mindset. And that's when I studied in EFT, Emotional Freedom Technique, where you go over tapping, you probably know it, where you're tapping on acupuncture points and lead people very quickly into the past. It's very known now because a lot of famous people, they're doing it now as well. And so EFT is really known. But just when I finished with that, I actually uh, came to the first and only paradigm we have in psychology, which is the three principle paradigm understanding, which gives us a fundamental understanding of how our moment to moment experience is created through seeing that there are only three constants, which is mind, thought, and consciousness. And um, I don't know, have you ever heard about it or? I 
for me, it's interesting. I mean, firstly, welcome to the podcast. And I think there's a lot to dissect there, right? And that's why I didn't cut you off because I think it's really important. And when we do the podcast, as we were discussing a little bit before we started, I think it's important to understand the parallels that we have in business to our health, right? Because I think a lot of people, they go through life and I did it for a long time. They're thinking, yeah, I've got this drive. I want to do this. I want to build this business. I want to do all these things. And for me, I didn't like neglect my health, but it wasn't a priority, right? And and some of which were one of the, I don't do New, Year, New Year's resolutions, but one of the things I wanted to start doing a lot more was prioritizing my own health a lot more. Now that's mentally, physically, and then arguably emotionally or spiritually, depending on uh, how you want to articulate it. And I think it's a very important point of view to think about because I think a lot of people where there's a lot of talk about to an extent, physical health, right? There always has been and there always has been, you know, we don't, we don't, we need to watch what we're eating, we need to do a lot of exercise, etc. But I think personally anyway, especially in the business world and, and as people, you know, maybe start in business, especially because I know a lot of the audience that listens to this podcast are people who either want to start a business or are on those opening stages or those beginning stages. And I think it's really important to establish the mindset that you have to have to be sustainable, right? Now we're looking at, unfortunately, the reality is we're looking at quite a steep re recession and a decline at the moment. There's, there's, you know, we can, we can pussyfoot around that to an extent if we want to, but the, that's the reality, right? So the reason why I'm trying to tweet the content around mindset now, because for a long time when we were in COVID, it was, okay, how do you market? How do you get through this? How do you deal with still communicating your mindset? And I think for me now, it's going to be a lot more about tweaking your mindset and making sure that you're resilient. Because I think for me personally, but also, uh, and I'll throw back to you in a moment, how do you have, well, firstly, do you have, a, you know, a strong religious mindset or, 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 you know, something which can't be knocked, knocked necessarily by things that happen in life? And if you do have one, how did you develop that? Because I think it's a really unutilized and a really powerful thing once you can establish it and once you can have it. Of all, um, we always talk that you have to develop um, resilience. I talk about resilience in a different way. It is we have to unfold resilience. Resilience is inbuilt. It is our, it is in us. It is just to unfold that you have that. It is to unfold that you are able to flourish and that we are living in the reality of thought passing by. And when we start to understand that, that um, it's not people's, uh, people's circumstances and events, but thought which is giving us our experience. So thought about our work, um, thought about coming on this podcast, that is giving me my experience. So for example, just to go in that, um, this morning I was going for a walk and I had a moment where I was thinking of coming on this podcast today. And in this moment, I didn't see where I was going. I was in thought, th contemplating, what am I going to say? How is this going to turn out? Um, I had a moment where I was worried. Um, but then because I have this fundamental understanding of how my mind works, how my moment to moment experience is created, I was able to see that was okay with being uncomfortable for a moment and then it passed and I was seeing my dog again I was seeing the trees again and I was present again till the next thought came up well you know this the next obvious thought came up do you see where I'm coming from and I think um, we're looking always for another technique another thing to put into place what we need to do we've got so much we have to deal with already in business or um just doing a live for example i did as well this morning i did a live on instagram and i thought i'm fine with going on going live that's not a problem for me the technical side you know so you need to go and sit down and learn how to do the technical side of things so, so there's lots to cover when you go into business it's one of those things though where you know, we'll, we'll jump out as a forwards a little bit more, I think, because when people start out, right, and something that I've found as, as I've grown in business and I've, uh, I've grown as a person as well, is you feel comfortable as long as you have evidence, some form of evidence from the past about what it is that you're going to do, 
right? But the thing is, to grow in marketing, to grow as a person, to grow in a business, to do the thing that hasn't been done before, not by you anyway, you have to do things which you're not used to. You have to push yourself outside your comfort zone. You have to do things which, you know, we'll use the example of uh, creating a video or coming on this podcast, right? Or coming on a podcast, it doesn't even have to be mine. But the concept of doing that is if you're not someone who's used to that process and used to maybe you don't host a podcast or maybe you haven't been on a lot of podcasts, you haven't been interviewed before, your brain because it, uh, from my understanding anyway, it's very, it's quite primitive, our brain. Our brain is still thinking, am I going to get eaten by a saber-toothed tiger or a lion or etc. here, right? But it sees the podcast or the concept of a podcast as a threat potentially, right? Because it's something that's unknown, right? And I think there's a lot of business, parts of business or parts of what we do now in our society now, where there's these social constructs which allow us to feel uneasy and you know i had i've just released today a great conversation with chris uh, who's a professional networker that you may know and you know he and i discussed the concept of this exact principle of you have to just do it but you have to set your expectations you have to understand that what by the time you're there and going to give that presentation you'll probably know 95 percent of the room to the point where they feel like friends. They're not these like cold, hard business people. They're people who you've slowly built a relationship with. And I think there's so much in business where we sometimes misunderstand the level of depth we can go in a relationship or the some people we know. And especially in marketing, we talk about this a lot. But I mean, from a mindset thing, maybe not technique based, but is there anything that you found has really... Because I, I know that people get very anxious about it, right? And I know that people arguably are borderline having panic attacks around it, it, it about the concept of doing video or they're feeling overwhelmed. And I felt overwhelmed, you know, um, multiple times and, and et cetera. I mean, how does, how does when those big events happen, would you say people should tackle those issues? Not so they don't happen again, because I don't think they're not... I don't... Like, if you're growing, they're going to happen. Right. If you're consistently outside your comfort zone, they're going to happen. Right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So why is it question to you? Why is it that some people that can go on this events, uh, go on speaking events or uh, do on a podcast and they don't they hardly have any thought about it? They just go on it. They're really comfortable with it. And other people, they are coming on uh, or they don't even go because they're too worried to go. They are too anxious to go. Why is that? And it is, and I give you the answer. It was only a rhetorical question. It is because that one person who is confident doesn't interact with thoughts they're having about going on that podcast. They maybe think for a moment as well, oh, what am I going to talk about? Um, do I talk about X, Y, Z? They probably have thinking about that, but they're overruling and then they just go on and they be themselves and they just chat and they're comfortable. And the other person doesn't see it as thought. So they are, have anxiety of going on a podcast and because they're not seeing as, as, as thought, because what I'm, you know, what I'm saying about this understanding of how our mind works, it's inbuilt. That's why it's not a technique. It's to unfold what's, what's happening in that moment. So they see it not as a thought that, oh, I go on that podcast is that thought. And then they create a lot of extra unnecessary thinking about that one thought. Oh, I'm going on that podcast. Oh my goodness, what am I going to say? And, oh, I don't know if I can do this. And, oh my God, am I, how am I going to look? And if other, other people think I'm, I'm stupid and, oh, how were they going to, and they're going to touch me and here and there and everything. So they really quickly overthink the whole thing. And the easiest way to cope with that is to say, I'm not even going to do this. Yeah, I, I'm not that person who can go live. So do you see that's the two difference that person is seeing innocently and doesn't even know subconsciously, they just know, oh, yeah, I don't have to get into that thought. They have other things they're worrying about. Maybe they're worrying about going on a plane and they're scared of flying and they're really interacting with that thought where this other person coming on a podcast is interacting with that. Do you see the difference? 
So when I understand, when I understand that it's thought and I have this deep, insightful knowledge about that I'm living in my thought created reality and I do see that, then I can be okay with that. So I just go back to my own example. A few years back, you wouldn't have got me on a podcast like this. I would have not put my hand up if you would have said who's coming on my podcast. No, no way. I had problems standing up in public talking to people when I was on a Zoom meeting, which I did already years ago through my um, going on um, seminars and so on. I was the one who was quiet in the corner and didn't say a word. What changed is that I have now this fundamental understanding and see that I live in the beliefs I am somewhere innocently created about myself. I'm that person who, who cannot talk in public. And when I saw that belief as a belief, which is a cluster of thought, and I saw that, I was able to overrule it. So I still have moments where that comes up like, hmm, you know, what I'm going to say. And like this morning, I had a moment where I thought, hmm, what am I going to say? Or yesterday when I, I heard this wonderful podcast you did with Ellen and um, Emily, and I just thought, what a great podcast. I don't know what I should do on your podcast. I cannot talk about business like that. But then I thought, different thought, and I thought, hang on a minute, I actually have something to say. And that is actually about fear speaking in public on going on podcasts. And that's actually what is really important and how you can overcome that. And for me, that fundamental way to over be able to overcome that myself was through understanding that I live in this moment, moment experience of thought passing by. So I can sit here in this chair and one moment I feel worry. In the next moment, I feel joy. In the next moment, I feel fear, whatever it is. I sit here half an hour and I will go through all kinds of different experience. But the only yeah. thing is I'm sitting here on my, on my gym ball. That's it. And I think it's a great observation because... You know, and it reminds me of a couple of things I've heard from other podcasts and uh, and such. And if I can find the links, I'll leave them in the description for those who are interested. But it, it they talk about, and it's from leading psychologists and some other people within within that industry, talking about that you as a person are not your thoughts, right? And your you have thoughts, yes, and you can say, okay, am I going to accept these thoughts? Which is a lot of what you were talking about there. And I think it's great to have that relationship with them and it takes time to develop right so if, if if someone's listening to this and they're not there yet that's fine right but i think there's a shock sometimes when people hear about it because they from an outside point of view some people may say i'm really confident some people say oh colin never gets nervous he never gets this he never gets that well in reality i get all of the above right and the reason why is because i care about the outcome right because I wholeheartedly care about producing a good product, e.g. the podcast, a, a valuable conversation, right? But the thing is, I have those thoughts, yes. But am I going to let them stop me from having this conversation, right? And sometimes I think, and I think the, the, the main point here is that awkward silent moment sometimes in presentations or that awkward silent moment in a conversation. And there's two ways you can go about it. Number one... People sometimes I feel like they feel they, they have to fill it with something, right? So their brain just panics and goes, what can I say to fill this gap? Because they're Ugh, there's a gap. Or the more confident the people who, I guess, are not at mercy to their thoughts a little bit more, will go, okay, there's a silent moment. It's a moment of pause. It's a moment of reflection, right? And I think if you look at anyone who one would admire... Uh, you know, a TED talk or a talk or a presentation or even a podcast, in normal conversation, there's pauses. In normal conversation, in general, us having a conversation when it's off the record, there would still be pauses. There would still be moments of thought and reflection. And I think it's so powerful once you can own those pauses because you're then not in the position where you feel like you have to panic and you can remove yourself from that anxiety and remove that stuff from 
actually really targeting what you're going to say and how you're going to say it. And when someone else is talking, so say, for example, in this conversation where we're going backwards and forwards, I'm focusing on what you're saying, right? I'm not thinking necessarily. I might have the odd thought of, oh, I should mention this next or etc. But I'm not thinking I need to interrupt now. I'm categorically listening to what you're saying. And that's how you can have an in-depth conversation on something because you're not going to be looking for this kind of, I need to fill the hole that's coming. Oh my God, what do I do? I mean, is there, from a neurological point of view, if you know, is there is there a, is there a point of view there like that happens where someone needs to step away from that? Because I think so many people... I can sit here and I can say, yeah, sure, do it, right? This is the, I understand your thoughts are separate to you, but it's all very well and good me saying that, but it's not that easy in practice, is it? Well, it's, it's an understanding. It's a fundamental understanding. And that comes via insight. So when I explain that to you and hold the mirror up and say, look, that's how you work. Then more and more that's going to be for you that you find that out. So for example, I say five times, look, it's the tip of your nose. It's the tip of your no nose. It's the tip of your nose. And then suddenly you say, oh, you're talking about the tip of my nose. You see, that's how it is because what I'm talking to you is something in build with us in 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 us and what i really like what you just mentioned is that pause thing and that is something which you develop in time and i still work on that and i think because we are human sometimes we get caught up and we just think oh you know i need to blah, 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 talk and then actually me personally, I get reminded on that as well. And when you were talking about that, it was really interesting because what, how I see it or how it is, is you, your cells, your brain, your gut, they're all the same cells. It's all the same. It's all pure energy. And thought is impersonal. It's traveling through you. It has nothing to do with your brain. It comes in and you cannot control what thought is coming in. It's coming in and it gives you an information. And that has done a ripple effect in your neurons where it starts, like when you throw a stone into the water, it starts to have a ripple effect. And then that one is knocking onto another neuron, has a ripple effect there, and then again there. And that's how your memory is coming up. Yeah? But if that thought doesn't come in, so that's how it starts. That impersonal thought is coming in and it is kicking something off. That's So I'm not talking about the stream. I'm talking about the spring where the stream starts, where the river starts. So you go to the beginning of it all. And now when I, sorry, sorry, when I just, and now when I know that, then I can sit as well in quietness in the conversation and like you rightly say i don't i maybe have a thought or two what i would like to say in this podcast but actually more and more i go into conversations and just see what unfolds because it's not us two talking here it is coming through us it's the creativity coming through us it's like when you wake up in the middle of the night and you suddenly got a brilliant idea of what you want to write as a blog or what you want to do next it is because your mind gets quiet and then suddenly creativity can come through it is the energy which connects us all yeah. And I think that's a really powerful point of view, because, I mean, for me, how does I mean, I connect really well with that when I meditate. Right. And I we can talk about that a little bit as well. But I think for people who don't have and this kind of leans into physical health as well. And it, it leads on to my next question, um, which I'll explain in a minute. But just to reiterate on that slightly, 
physical health and meditation and giving yourself this space, whether that's in the middle of the day, the end of the day, the morning, the evening, whatever it is for you, ideally, to be honest, it should be in the morning and in the evening, right? Ideally. But the that might not be practical for the for the person, right? And the the thing is, I think it's about giving and something that I didn't do for many years and something that I found huge benefit in doing since I started doing it January, February this year was giving myself allocated time that is non-negotiable, right? So I have an hour or two in the morning that's non-negotiable, right? Doesn't matter what technically I have to do or I'll move it to another time. I have to give myself two hours in the morning. I have to give myself an hour in the evening that's just for me and me alone. And the reason why that's powerful is because I was finding last year specifically and, and, the, and the previous years as well, that I was getting so engrossed in the business that I was going 150 miles an hour and then I would get stressed and then I would be exhausted and then I was eating badly and then I wasn't nourishing my body and then I wasn't doing physical exercise and then the cycle repeats, right? And what was ending up happening was I wasn't burning out, so to speak, because I was loving what I was doing. It was really exciting, but I was just getting tired. And I was just getting exhausted and I wasn't giving my mind enough space. And, and physically, you can do a lot of things. But mentally, I don't think we give our same the, the same level of respect than we do physically. Right. We push ourselves when we're in the gym, for example, till our muscles fail, right? completely fail. But mentally, we go to our brain fails. And then for some reason, as business owners, we're people who are driven and want to build. We keep going. And there's a form of. You can do it to an extent, but you are going to have a natural knock-on effect to that, which means you're going to have to take that energy from somewhere else. And you're either in control of where that energy comes from, e.g. by saying it's going to, you know, I'm going to put these blocks in place so that they're the bits I de stress and they're the bits I can give my brain that time to, to just not have to worry and stress about certain things. Or your body's going to do it for you. Because if your body, your body's very good at telling you how it's feeling and what it needs, you then need to choose whether you listen or not. And the, and the question I was going to ask you is, how, in your experience, have you found that physical health and mental health are connected if they are? There is only one. One doesn't go without the other. And like I said before, you, you're thoughts giving you the information and that's how it expresses itself on a physical level that's why mind is over matter completely utterly when you think when you just look at a cell for example you got a cell um, and in you got a molecule which is only um, uh, a nucleus in the middle then you got protons flying around and then you got pair of electrons in between what is in between it's space so we actually say the whole universe is fitting on the tip of your finger. Yeah, the rest is energy. And how does it express it itself? So when you get information in, it expresses itself till down on a cellular level. So it really depends what you're doing with this energy, you and around you. It's all, mm -hmm. it's all, it's all one. It's all one. And just to come back as well, what you were saying, what came up for me is that we never, never give ourselves time just to be. When is it really that we just sit down in a chair and not do anything? Just looking out the window or we're sitting by the sea and watch the waves or wherever you are or sitting in the woods, just watch the trees. And I'm guilty of that too, a lot of the time. You know, you go in the morning, you start working. I mean, I as well, I give myself the time. I meditate in the morning and I just give myself the time. But then you pick up your phone or just say me, pick up my phone. Then I go on my computer. Uh, I make sure most of the time without when I want to do a reel or something that I don't take my phone when I actually walk the dog as well to really be away. And on the weekend, I make sure as well I'm off electronics. That's for me really important. But otherwise, I mean, you're constantly on the phone. Then maybe in the evening you watch something, then you pick up a book and read, and then you go to sleep. So you're constantly doing this, you know, and then computer, book, whatever it is. Then you listen to a podcast. 
but you never give yourself time just to be. And that is actually the moment when creativity comes through us and when we start to be creative in our job. And I think that's where some magical ideas can come from as well, right? Because so much of creativity and so much of what like I do and what you do needs creative input, right? Like I can't sit here with a client every day and say, these are some incredible business ideas for your business, right? Because there might be some days where I just don't have those. But there'll also be random times where something will, I'll be walking down a street and I'll see something or I'll see a video that inspires me or I'll see something else that inspires me or I hear a sound or etc. Something that just inspires me and then puts some dots together in my own head. And I think what you were talking about there is like a huge amount of our society right now is designed around, we have all this stimuli hitting us, right? So... You know, we wake up in the morning and we the, f the first thing you shouldn't do is be on your phone. And, you know, what I've tried to do and work on personally, again, this year, another thing like, you know, for me, 2022 was this kind of let's build. OK, I've done a lot in business now. Great. I've established this brand. I've established who I am. I know what I want. I know what I, I know what I'm doing marketing wise. OK, great. So now I need to work on me. I need to give myself that time and that that kind of disconnect a little bit from business because I did, I was very focused. 2019, 2020, 2021, uh, to an extent it would have been 2022 if I didn't intervene. I was very focused on let's build the business, let's build the business, let's keep building the business. And something that I've realized is the amount of energy and the amount of stress and the amount of worry and the lack of sleep and that I eat a lot of rubbish and so on and so on and so on and so on and, so on. and it causes this knock-on effect of chain reaction only happened because i didn't prioritize myself and giving myself these rules that are non-negotiable and the thing is like as i say that I've, I've talked about two of them in, the, in, in this episode but as i say having that time but also something for me in business you're either reactive or you're doing something that's not reactive to someone else right so answering an email is reactive answering a message is reactive going on social and consuming content and then writing comments and stuff which is all valuable stuff to do for the business are all reactive so for me i say i'm not going to be reactive in the business until 11 12 o'clock every day and the reason why is because in the morning because i've given myself that space in the morning that's when I get my most creative decisions and most creative things from a longevity point of view and a growth point of view and a point of view where we're growing as a company. What are the uh, you know operational decisions I need to make? Who who do I need to connect with? Who am I looking to connect with next? Who do I need to talk to about internal growth and then external growth and what clients are going on and all these things. But they, it gives me that time. If I'm going to do time blocking, then okay, then I can work on that. I can look at what that is, where, what time am I going to spend? But again, it all comes back to you at the end of the day as a business owner, because no one's going to love your business more than you are. And you need to understand that whether you've got employees or whether you work with freelancers, whether you work with subcontractors, the, the core of the business is still have, going to have to come from you. The vision, the culture, the belief that it's going to work and especially i think if someone's going to take anything from this podcast i think that times are uh, the reality of the fact is times are going to get harder right they are but if you can dig deeper and look after yourself which i think is the the the, the, the thing we've been talking about a lot today then you'll be fine right now the definition of fine is so subjective so we won't go into it necessarily but you as a business owner you as a person need to firstly establish your values. And that does lead on to my next question, which was going to be around someone's values to themselves and how they get them fulfillment from that. But, you know, for me, I think it's about understanding what's really important to you. Because a lot of people, just before you, you know, hand back to you, a lot of people have said to me, oh, Cotton, you work so, you work a lot, right? And I still work a lot, even though I'm prioritizing and I've still got times that I are non-negotiable, as we've discussed for me i'm still working a lot but the thing is for me I've, i understand how the, this job and how what i'm doing relates to the values which i hold right and i think that for someone because for me for a long time i didn't know those and i wasn't able to articulate those and i wasn't able to understand those internally so for someone who is concerned or, or is like i don't really know if this is the right path for me or i want to i feel like i should be starting this business but I'm not 100% sure because it's something feels off. I mean, how 
have you navigated that? How would you how would you help someone navigate that? Like I said as well in the beginning, it is not external. It is listening within. And be really honest with yourself. What is it what you want? How does it resonate with me? And when I when I can hear any, we say duff notes, when I can hear any duff notes, then I know maybe it's not what I should, should or want to do in the moment, because life is always, oh, I should be doing that. And, oh, I have to do that. But actually, we are good when good to go and good in what we want to do. And that's what we're going to be successful in. That's when people talk about when you are passionate in something, that's what you bring out. That's what you're successful in. It is because that's what we want to do. And that's why we are able to thrive in that. And for me also, you know, this breaks what you were talking about. You need that in the morning and that's your most creative time. So for you, it works in the morning. For other people, it's in the night. For some people, it's in the middle of the day. Um, I think there are no rules and I think it is a get, get away from what works for other people. It's like all this self-helping books, what we're having. It is what works for you best. People in their self-helping books, they're writing about what works for them. And it can be something which resonates with you, that it wakes something up in you, what you know is true for you. So it helps you on the way, but it will be still slightly different to the one who wrote that book. So it is really to in tune and what's going on for me? How does it sit for me? What is it what I need? Yeah, and I think I think that point of view is very important because I think sometimes, especially in the entrepreneurial space, we look at, you know, pick your important entrepreneur here right like there's loads you could think of but we want to kind of go i have to wake up at 5 a.m to be like that i have to you know then be like three workouts into the gym by the end of the day or i have to do this or i have to do that or i have to you know i i find myself still falling into this trap to an extent where i'm kind of saying well this person's done this and they achieved this by my age so what am i doing wrong Right. Well, again, that doesn't matter. That's not an important. It's, it's my formula. And as long as I feel like I'm where I should be or I'm happy with it myself, then I'm not in a position where I should compare myself necessarily. And we look at this when we talk about competitors as well in business. Right. Because everyone's market's getting more competitive. That's that's the reality. Right. But that shouldn't mean that you should have any less work or you should feel like your position in the market is like, oh, my God, people are going to take all my clients because the core of why someone works with you is actually to an extent within reason, of course, not really to do with your actual product specifically or service. It's because of you and how you do it and how you challenge and how you help them maybe think about what they're doing in their business, how they can grow their business. Maybe you're their idea thinker. Maybe maybe they're just inspiring. You're inspiring them. They're inspiring you. There's a reciprocal relationship that's built there, which is more powerful than whatever it is that you invoice for or ask money for, right? And I think it's something which not a lot of business owners, especially at the start, understand. And I still am struggling with this now. I mean, I go in in phases of, of not having it and having it, right? But the core for me is actually understanding that no one technically is my competitor and everyone is my collaborator. And I think it's I think it's really, really important to make sure that you work on that mindset. Now, this isn't a mindset that you can just keep and it isn't something that you have, right? Because Technically, if someone else who does video gets a project that I would love to do, I've te they're technically a competitor. But that's not my decision. I may have loved to do that, and I may have thought we could have done an amazing job on that project. But the person who runs that project and the person who works with that client or works with that individual has chosen that person for a reason. It might be they're within budget for them. 
okay? It might be because their style fits it. It might be because just simply their personality works with works with the team around the project and it's going to be a more you know creative environment and etc and there's so many other factors that are not in my control right and i think we can use so much energy on oh my god this person's doing really well and i'm not so f that person right and we can um, and just think for a second if you're watching this and if you're going to remember anything from this conversation i think to put that energy into something else don't put it into holding a grudge. Don't put it into F this person because they're doing better than me. What can you, how can you use that? In, how can you use that energy to do something productive for you? Mm. I think it has all to do with self judgment. And when, when I start to see that I live in the, my own beliefs and I see that, then I know I cannot be like you, you cannot be like me, I cannot think like you, you cannot think like me. I can only ever be true to myself. And then the judgment starts to fall away. So I, I used to judge myself a lot and I used to compare myself as well a lot to other people. To everyone, I was I was really big with that because I had a belief which I carried around since my childhood that I'm I'm not intelligent enough. I don't know enough more. So what I needed to do is I needed to do course after course after study. You know, so I did loads of degrees and and everything, but it never I never was holding up to my own standards. And then when I came to this understanding, I suddenly saw that I carried with me this belief since my childhood, I'm not intelligent enough. So to live up to my own expectations, I had to do this and that and the other, and I continuously compared myself with other people. Now I know this is something I created innocently around myself. And I know now this is nothing else than a cluster of thought I carried with me over time and space. But it doesn't identify me in this moment of who I am. And when I saw that insightfully, I still get that from moment to moment that I have a moment, of, oh, you know, she's really good. But today I think, oh, she's really good. Uh, and me, today I think, oh, she's really great. I want to have a conversation with her. You know, and maybe who knows, we can collaborate or do whatever you see. So I'm, it really changed the way you turn up because you are just what you are in this moment right now, but thought is telling you otherwise. Yeah. And I think it's a, something that I've brought into my own thought process and something that I've worked on for the last couple of years, to be honest, since, since I've been full time and since I've really done lent into Brunton Media and what it is and what it means to me. I've, I've always thought about this concept of it's you versus you. Right. And it's and it's something which, you know, we were just talking about there briefly. And it's as long as I'm doing better than I was this time last year in whatever my relationship to that is. So that might not necessarily be business related, because if my values and my appreciation and my want has changed more towards prioritizing my personal life overall, then that's fine, right? Because there's stages, and I've said from the beginning, for me, because people who have always said to me, oh, you work really hard, you do this, you do this, you do this. I'm like, yeah, this is the point I'm in my life at the moment. At this moment in my life, that's what I choose to do. And that's what I want to do. There'll be points in my life where I then start bringing it back as we sort of started, as I said in this podcast, we've started to see it. I've already started and made the decision in my own life to say I've done most of the hard work now. I've built and established what, what this is going to be. And now it's just the consistency I need to do to, to continue to grow the business. And I think it's something that you have to be okay with yourself. Because, and as we've talked about a lot in this podcast or in this conversation, so many people, especially at the beginning, they're looking for outside validation to make them happy. They're looking for, and to an extent, this is where materialism comes from, right? And I'm conscious of time, so you won't get too into it. But I think this is where materialism initially comes from, right? Like, or camera envy in my industry, for example, right? Oh, this person has that camera. Oh, I need to go and buy this camera because they've got that. When in, in the reality, 
at the end of the day, we're both creating videos. We're both creating the videos the way we feel we should. A camera's a tool. Can his camera or her camera do something different or do something more technically advanced if it's a higher grade camera than mine? Sure. But that doesn't change the fact that I can't tell a good story and the fact that I can't articulate my message thoughtfully and powerfully through the medium of video. That doesn't, that shouldn't be a yardstick for me to say that I'm less of a video creator because I am not shooting on X, Y, or Z, right? And I think, I think it's something which for me, and I use the camera analogy because it's one that a lot of people in my industry can relate to, but I think it's also one that even people within my industry can't, that, that, that they'll still be able to relate to because they understand it. And there's, there's, of course, parallels with other industries. And I think as just a final thought, if it's something that someone's listening and they, they're struggling with dealing with that, I think it's something you have to give yourself time to be okay with that and be able to develop and learn and and actually fail because i think so much of our society is around failure is a bad thing right and i'd be interested in your thoughts as a, as a final as a, as a final ping before we wrap up on on people who see failure as a bad thing because for me I don't. I see it as a learning opportunity for me to get better and get closer to the, the, the better version of myself that I'm striving for every day. My question is, what is failing? Who can I fail? I can only ever fail myself. I cannot fail anyone else. I set the standard. And when I set the standard, I'm falling myself. So it goes again into self-judgment and being hard with yourself. You know, sometimes we want to do something, but life has just simply other plans with us. And then I say, oh, I failed. Um, but actually, it's always, there's always intelligence behind that. So it's always a learning involved. And when we can see that, but like I said, it really has a lot to do with judgment, with self-judgment. And some people that can see that as a learning curve and they actually grow out of it and other people that completely fall because they are so caught up in their own judgment and be really hard with themselves that they're, and they cannot see it again. I come in, they cannot see it for what it is. I live, I'm the the filmmaker of my own film, I'm living in day in and day out. And when I can start to understand that insightfully, and that's what I educate people in. When I can start to see the fundamental understanding of that, then I know failure is not failing, but it's, it's intelligence behind that. It's a learning, it's a learning and I failed my own expectations. You know, the thing is we're putting stuff into motion. So we start a new project and we're putting that into motion and we are already attached to the outcome. But what it is, is I can set stuff into motion. I can do stuff in my business. Like now I'm, I'm bringing this group program out. And my aim is really to take people away from all this Weight Watchers and Slimming World and also getting them to have a different understanding about their health and well-being, that all the answers are innate. I want them to wake up and be able to empower people to take responsibility for themselves and see that. So they are, they are less judgmental with themselves, but more understanding and loving and kind with themselves. So I try to bring that out. I really would like to start a movement with that. But if it does going to be that, I have no control over. So I can do stuff to get the bowl rolling but I cannot be attached or I can be attached to the outcome but if I am attached to the outcome I will be disappointed maybe I will be excited who, who knows what it's going to take so life is far different when I just 
or when I see that there is only this moment right now, that's all I need to know. Yeah, and I think it's it's something that you can really reflect on is when you stop worrying about what's either happened or what's going to happen and just live in that moment. I think it's very powerful, very important and and can be quite difficult to get into. But I think it's something which, as I say, if someone's going to take anything from this podcast is to try to limit how much you worry about. Start by limiting it. Right. You're not going to suddenly go no, from 100 percent. No, sorry to, to, to interrupt. It, it's really to understand that it's thoughts. So you are human. You get caught up. You get really busy. You get really overwhelmed. You get really stressed out. It's all fine. It's all fine to be. But when I understand that it's thought created, that I just experienced thought and that is giving me my experience. I don't know if you ever saw um, there was a, um, a, a research about stress. And they found out that people who have high amounts of stress, have you ever seen that? There was a TED talk about that as well. People who have high amounts on stress and think it's harmful for their health, they have the most uh, heart attacks. And people who have loads of stress, but think it's not harmful for their health, they have the least heart attacks, even less than people who have little stress, but think it's harmful for their health. And you know what happened in the arteries? The people who thought it was harmful for their health, their arteries really constricted. And people who had loads of stress, but didn't thought it was harmful for the health they thought oh yes in this moment i get really going i get more oxygen supply in my brain you know i get really you know going fantastic their arteries stayed nicely wide and open mm. and so I, there you can see the power of thought yeah and I, I think it's one of those things that i've had as a core in the business as well which is if you set your mind to a achieving something or doing something or wanting to build something that the only person standing between that thing whatever that thing may be for you and doing it is you right and uh, as you as you just articulated about the people who see health uh, or see stress as bad for your health your body again will listen to to that right so if i say me doing a podcast is bad for me then i'm probably going to feel bad because it, it because I'm telling my body that doing a podcast feels bad, but also it works the other way. So if I say, actually doing a podcast fills me with confidence, it fills me with understanding, it gets me to explore loads of different topics and be able to actually educate myself on things in a deeper way, which then I can share. Okay, great. So now I'm now I'm suddenly in a different mindset when it comes to doing a podcast. I've suddenly gone from, oh, no, what if the podcast goes wrong? What if something technically breaks? Or what if what if it's not a good conversation? And then going, oh, my God, but what if it is? What are we going to talk about today? And this, and this is why I only do limited research on my guests. Because for me, personally, and it's just my style, I'm not saying don't do research on your guests if you're running a podcast and everyone has a different style. Again, it's everyone's different point of view. For me, I like to explore with that guest where the podcast goes so i can live in the moment i'm not thinking oh i read this thing about something they did in 2016 or 2015 or 2014 or whatever it was because then my mind's not going to be present my mind's going to be going through all of the things i've just researched on you or whoever it else it is that i'm that i have uh that i'm interviewing and it allows me not to focus and listen and i mean fully listen as i discussed a little bit before fully listen on on what you're saying and how i can then add to what you're saying and then bounce forward which is whether it's a recorded conversation or, or non-recorded conversation that should be how you react in every conversation because the whole point of us connecting as humans in my opinion is to try and add some level of intellectual value to each person from every interaction we have with each other Right now, that might not be that I agree with every single one of your opinions. That's fine. I'm still going to explore what those opinions are to understand from your perspective why you have them. Doesn't mean I'm going to agree with them. I don't need to. I need to understand why you, how you got to that assumption or why you got to that belief. 
And I think it's something which we sometimes overlook in life, not in business specifically, but in life. And, you know, I really appreciate you coming on. I really appreciate you talking so openly because hopefully this will give people an opportunity to really think more about their own mindfulness and their own world is theirs. It's not like you have other people in your world, of course, that are important to you, but your world is your world. It's yours and you're in complete control of it. I mean, for people who are interested in potentially reaching out to you, hearing about some group coaching, looking at some more of your blog content, uh, website, etc., where where is best for people to reach out to continue this conversation with you? Mm, yes, you can get hold of me. Uh, my website is um, healthy living. Nope. <laughs> it's healthy living with Paola uk, and you can also contact me over LinkedIn, Instagram. Uh, if you like, um, or send me an email on paola at paolaroyal.co.uk. Thanks so much for joining me, ladies and gents. I hope you took value from this podcast episode. And if you did enjoy it, I'd love you to think in the comment section down below. I'll be back next week with a brand new episode and a brand new conversation for you. And uh, I'm really enjoying these podcasts at the moment. So uh, not to say I wasn't previously, but uh, they've been really, really good and really, really insightful. And we're really starting to build some momentum with them. So uh, that's great as well. So thank you so much for coming back and joining me once again. And I'll see you very, very soon with some brand new content. We've got lots planned and lots going on. So that's fantastic. And I'll see you very soon.